Well, right now you're watching The Watchful Citizen, and we are sponsored by the Lancaster County Democrats. We're speaking with Mark Intermill. He's Advocacy Director at AARP, and we're talking about health care reform. My name is Barbara Beyer. Um, so when we look at all these uh, 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 suggestions, uh, uh, different proposals on the table, uh, of course, cost comes uh -huh. to mind. Is this going to bust the budget for the feds? Well, uh, that's you know that that is a, a concern, and I think that's a legitimate point of debate: is how much do we, how much can we afford to spend on health care? Um, right now, the the primary cost uh, associated with HR thirty two hundred, the House bill, comes into the is associated with the subsidies to people who need to go to the health insurance exchange to purchase coverage, but they really can't afford it. There are subsidies for those individuals to be able to buy coverage. Uh, anybody with an income below 300% of poverty, which for a family of four is about $66,000, could qualify for some subsidy. Now at 66, it's not a full subsidy but then it works down as your income goes down. That's the cost that we're talking about, trying to make sure that uh, insurance is affordable. So when you talk in those terms, uh, is it affordable to provide the subsidy? The alternative question is, is it affordable not to? Uh, because if we don't provide subsidies to enable people to buy coverage, we will continue to have uncompensated care in hospitals will continue to have medical bankruptcies, which add to that uncompensated care. Uh, so I think we need to, it, it is a, a point of debate. And I know there um, are uh, people who quite thoughtfully have come to the conclusion that this is not affordable. But I think we need to look at what, what's the cost of doing nothing. And the cost of doing nothing is substantial. Uh, and I think if, you, if we look at that in those terms, we would conclude that this may not be as unaffordable as it's being made out to be. Well, one of the things that I've read um, a number of times over recent years is that uh, uh, the United States uh, is not as competitive uh, economically on the global scene as it once was. And one of the primary causes of that is, is that our uh, corporations, uh, even our small businesses quite often, uh, have to go and include the cost of health care in every product that they're selling in the global economy. So uh, does this lack of universal coverage impact us in the larger sense? Well, here, here's what, what I can. I, I, that's a, a great question, and I think that is something that we really need to get a handle on our health care costs uh, in the United States. Um, we're spending about $6,500 per person on health care. At least that was back in 2007, that was the number. Mm -hmm. uh, just to con con contrast that to Japan, you mm -hmm. know, Toyotas versus Fords, uh, they spend about 3000 per person, so less than half of what we spend per person for health care. So when you're making a car and you're employing a person in Japan as opposed to the United States, uh, there's a significant amount of, of costs that you have to account for in just as a result of the health care system. Mm -hmm. uh, so that it is. Now, if we were sp paying twice as much for health care and getting twice as good of a result, that may be worthwhile. That may, may be a good investment. But what we're seeing in the health outcomes in the United States compared to the rest of the world is that we're not doing that well. Um, when you look at life expectancy, infant mortality, uh, healthy life expectancy, which was total minus disabled years, we tend to be in the 30s in terms of rankings. Um, 30s among, among other countries. Exactly. So we're talking about countries like who life, is ahead well, of us? Uh, well, let's, let's talk about who we're tied with. Okay. Uh, in life expectancy, um, we're tied with, among other nations, Cuba. Oh, uh, now, that's kind of a surprise. Cuba is not able to provide its citizens with toilet paper. 
Uh, so yet here we are. Ty, I don't think that's the, the, the area, the neighborhood we want to be in, in terms of life expectancy. Infant mortality, we're down with Slovenia, uh, Lithuania, uh, healthy life expectancy, Portugal. Uh, now, not, not th there's anything that I have against Slovenia, Portugal, Slovakia, Cuba, but um, we're way behind our other competitor nations, Japan. Japan is near the top in life expectancy. Uh, France, Germany, Great Britain, Canada, all are ahead of us in these measures. Um, so these are things that um, kind of indicates to me that we're not getting good value for the dollars that we're spending.